But now it seems that the church too is caught up in what appears to be a general offensive, an offensive of evil, an offensive of anti-Christ, anti-God human beings who look now to the pridefulness and arrogance that has grown from the success of our science and believe that the day has finally come when they may banish the truth from the consciousness and conscience of humankind. And we are here today because a great crisis has resulted for the church from this offensive. And it seems that as the focal point of that crisis is the leadership which we have relied upon to lead us as light in the midst of this darkness, it is time that we remember that we have accepted the light of Jesus Christ within each and every one of our minds and every one of our hearts and every one of our spirits. And that light shines from us as well. Now we are called, now we are called as the soldiers of God and Christ we were confirmed to be, to let that light shine out in us no matter what the darkness brings. And the sad truth is, the sad truth is that it is likely to bring much sorrow and much persecution before the Lord triumphs in us and through us once again. And I say that more truly than I have said it in a long time, though I have to say, you, those of you who have followed my career in politics, no, I've been... I've been wont to try to point out to people that we were walking down a path that was straying from God's way and that at least in this great country of ours there is nothing going to survive of our self-government and our constitution and our liberty and our prosperity and all the things we think that we have done forgetting that at the end of the day if this nation had not been founded on the belief that we are all of us created by God Almighty, that right is determined by His will, that the standard of justice is set out in His law, then the government of, for, and by the people would long ago have perished from the earth as every other attempt in so-called democratic self-government perished in the history of the world. We outlasted them not because we are better than our forebears, but because we had better sense than to let go of God and Jesus Christ. I have had many reasons, as many of us have, to be thankful that ours is a God of, of repentance and mercy as well as law and truth. But I was in all of that almost childlike in my in my good faith, my belief that at the end of the day, guided by the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church would be blessed by God with leaders that would never let go his hand, never betray his truth, never confuse his law. But that faith is surely being tested now. And I cannot say that without sorrow. I cannot say it without a broken heart. I cannot say it without a fear for the future of our country, of our world. For if the Catholic Church no longer plays its role, if the Catholic leadership no longer provides that foundation on which we can rely, if instead they would have us now commit to embrace the very sins that we are seeing destroy the world, then we must be tempted to believe there is no hope that God's wrath is already upon us. But no matter how they now conduct themselves, we must conduct themselves as what we have always been told we are. Not people beholden to the world and human beings, but children of God who will not stray from His merciful love because we know we cannot survive without his forgiveness. And this is the prayer that I would offer to God Almighty. Dear Lord, by your power,
power and by your might, break the hardened hearts of our leadership. Open them again to your spirit and your love. Open them again to the joy of spreading your truth. Open them again to the joy and expectation that though we walk in the shadow of the valley of death, yet we fear no evil. For our eyes are fixed on the Lord our God, and our will is fixed on serving His purpose, which is to save all who will be saved, and are willing to walk the path that leads to that salvation. We are here today praying this prayer to you, O Lord, on behalf of those bishops. Not all of them have strayed from you, but all of them now need your strength. All of them now need your spirit. All of them can only be saved now by your power. And we earnestly entreat you, look not on our sins, but on our broken hearts and on our still unshaken faith in the church and help them to become again what we trusted all our lives that they would be, the servants of God and his mercy, walking the way of Jesus Christ to lead the world to his glory.